Hello, how are we doing? Another great sunny day. I know uh, plenty of farmers would be wanting to see a bit of rain at the moment, but uh, man, it's nice to have the sunshine. Um, I'm just out here uh, down in Waxford where um, we're doing a bit of a trial uh, comparing liquid uh, urea to granular urea. So back in 2020, I got some grant funding and did a, a trial on four different farms looking at uh, comparing foliar to granular. Um, now by the time the grant was approved and everything else came through it got into August and then we did um, a few applications and then we ran into into of course the closing period in the middle of September and we only got a few applications done it's a time of the year that's got quite a high organic nitrification happening in the soil so you know even after the first application we found that control that got zero nitrogen grew just as much as as the foliar and the, and the granular so the trial was 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 quite difficult um, then we ended up with the samples in the lab for many months because of COVID and and it was thrown out a bit. What we did learn in that trial is a few things is that the logistics for the farmers are getting that foliar applied was quite difficult. So for foliar the idea is that you apply it to leaf and you need to get a bit of cover on that plant uh, to be able to spread. We found at that time then that quite often the weather didn't actually allow us to spread and so we're delayed by a few days and we could be three or four days away from grazing by the time we got the N on. So it was actually the logistics that sort of made it quite difficult. Um, the four farmers that were involved in that trial all um, were very interested in the foliar, but none of them ended up um, continuing down that track because they just found that it was just, just a little bit difficult logistically. So, um, the benefits of foliar are in several areas. I mean, you're bypassing a process and the conversion process, and but but also um, you're able to add other things to the urea. So the main one being uh, humic acid. So uh, humates being like a concentrated form of compost. You know, like you're adding a um, carbon source to the product that is um, allowing that nitrogen to grab that carbon source rather than having to rob the carbon source from the soil to go through the conversion process. So generally for every kilo nitrogen you apply that has to grab between 5 and 10 kilos of carbon and that's live microbiology really that to, to go through that conversion process. So adding the humic acid allows you to minimize the impact on that soil. So what what I thought might be worth trialling is looking at avoiding that that having to apply it to the leaf. <clears throat> so what we're trying to do is um, compare liquid nitrogen to granular nitrogen. So all we're doing is melting down urea, adding humic acid, and we're applying that over here um, uh, throughout the year. And we're looking at comparing to see if we can grow the same amount of uh, pasture using only 70% of the of the nitrogen, um, and and just looking at all the differences. What we found with the foliar is is that um, cows were actually really willing to graze the foliar applied side of the trial more willingly than the, the granular. So some days you'd, you'd have the cows in a paddock where. Um, you'd have 45% of the paddock in foliar, 45% in granular, and 10% in, in control. And all bar two or three cows are grazing the foliar and, and the control. So, you know, they have a, such a high preference for grazing the foliar applied. Um, the palatability is really affected by granular nitrogen. So, um, over here, uh, I'm, I'm at the moment in the paddock that is that was supposed to be grazed um, but we've decided that the quality has gone too poor on on the granular side of it to graze so we're actually going to mow the whole paddock out of it um, yes we're in deficit but it's just it wouldn't, it's no point putting it into the cows so the cows are on two kilos a meal at the moment we're just going to miss a few paddocks and get and feed them more meal because it's just gone too steamy we're going to drop too much production by grazing these so um, so the one I'm standing in at the moment is going to get mowed. So this side is the liquid applied. Um, and this is uh, the paddock that we've gone at 100% of the rate. So we're doing exactly the same amount in liquid 
uh, as what we do in granular. So the idea is that if it's more efficient, we should be growing more grass at 100% of the rate than on the granular side. Um, and, the, and the paddock that we're going to look at next is at 70% versus 100%. So we're going at 21 kilos of nitrogen per hectare on granular and liquid. Control has had nothing now for two rotations so far. So that's just where we are at the moment. It's going to continue for the year. So at the moment we're seeing um, this is this is the, the liquid side. Um, so there's, there's, there's good colour in the graph. But we're already running into a difficulty of how to measure the trial because the cows grazed us about... 300 kilos of dry matter per hectare harder than the than the granular side last time so the palatability on this is just so much better the cows have such a preference for grazing this that the 520 cows on the herd here and they were all bar about 10 of them trying to graze this didn't want to go onto the granular side so they left a lot more residual the difficulty with this whole thing then becomes how do we measure growth because growing from a a tight residual versus a poor residual is quite different. Um, you know, it takes a lot more energy to grow from a lower residual than what it does from a, from a poor residual. So it's a good thing putting the mowers through it this time because at least it resets that whole thing. So we're already finding some difficulty in in uh, in seeing how how the growth rates are affected by the nitrogen because of the way they're being grazed. So just looking at this. I think this is quite interesting. This is um, uh, where the where the white pegs, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but we've got white pegs in place. So the liquid is on this side, granular on the back, uh, and the middle is control. So the control is actually, you know, you can see a, a notable color difference. But we've gone two rotations now with no nitrogen on this control, and really, um, it's surprising how how well it looks for this time of the year when our our nitrogen requirements in the soil are probably as high as they ever are. Um, but you know, you can just see the plant is under stress at an earlier stage and there's definitely um, more color difference between the urine patches and, and, the, and the pasture as well. So yeah, quite noticeable. So and then in the back here, is the is the granular and like I said you know the cover is is way higher on this um, as why well, we're having to mow this out now um, because we left a residual of, of about 300 or like 1800 in total uh, terms uh, it means there's way more stem in the base of the plant and, um, and yeah we're just we're, we're not prepared to put this through the cows at this time so um, we want cows to stay well over two kilos of milk solids we're not going to do that on this sort of pasture so um, so we're going to take it out um, but yeah there's a there's a lot more stem in here than what there is in the front so look we could graze the front and mow the back but it would just I've just throw the trial out too much so um, we're just going to have a look at the paddock next door that was grazed uh, cows came out of there this morning so we'll have a look at it so yep just in this um, next paddock here um, it's actually really really difficult to tell the difference here so we've gone at 70% uh, rate on um, on the liquid so 70% of 21 kilos 21 kilos of nitrogen per hectare on granular in the form of straight urea um, and so um, definitely the residual is quite a bit higher on the on the granular so um, this paddock is actually going to get topped so um, yeah it needs to be topped because it's just too much stem in the base the whole idea about topping is, is uh, making sure that it's good quality next time around not not trying to fix something really bad so um so yeah um, cows have to be pushed fairly hard even to get it to this um, but um there's quite a bit of residual left here and you can see you can see the residual is, is a lot lower on the on the um, liquid side of it so 
um, you know the mower's not going to be doing a lot of work on the liquid side but we're going to clean the whole lot off so yeah this is this is now the liquid side so um, so yeah already already finding a few interesting things um, one palatability is massively impacted by nitrogen use um, two uh, control does grow less grass but surprisingly it's it's not having as big an impact as we probably thought um, and uh, the practicalities of liquid are certainly much better so we're spreading the liquid exactly the same day as the granular on here um, but of course you have the advantage that it's already diluted you know it doesn't need to be it doesn't need to lay on the soil and go through the whole process of of enough moisture to to melt it down you know laying on the soil so you know we are we are well ahead on the liquid side so again at this at, at this time where we're, the weather has been so so dry i think there's some massive advantages in the liquid and becoming more plant available quicker um, the humic acid should allow us to really reduce the losses and it should should allow us to have a product that's safer for losses than than straight urea by a long way on granular and as good as protected urea for losses so yeah look it's um there's a trial that we're going to continue for the rest of the year we might actually take it to a few paddocks where we do one treatment in the whole paddock and another treatment in the paddock next to it the problem is you don't get enough randomization because every paddock over the years has been treated differently they've got receded at different times and you know it's very difficult to to get the randomization right to be able to do a true comparison but um yeah look we're gonna we're gonna probably extend this because at the moment i think we're very happy with the liquid how easy it is to apply um to mix to you know to manage and um you know like whether whether we end up with half the farm going to liquid and half the farm going to granular you know we'll have to have some discussions about that but um yeah at the moment uh i think we're happy with with the results so um yeah stay tuned <laughs>